Hello everyone, my name is Rick Pasek, Flatfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, right away, first off, air conditioner is on, so hopefully it's not too noisy, but it's uh, a little warm here today, so. Alrighty, uh, today we'll be tying a uh, little CDC sedge pattern. Um, I really like this pattern. It's something I've been playing with on and off for several years, um, adding this, adding that, uh, taking away stuff. Um, and I've come up with a pattern that uh, I've had success with. I like the looks of it. I like the, how it reacts. Um, and I've had success with it out in the water. Uh, rivers and lakes. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's not play around. Let's get her going. So in the vise today, we will be using a Hens BL254N in a size 8. It's a downturned eye short shanked uh, one times uh, two, no two times strong um, I want this to be just in that surface film right so um, for the thread I'm going to be using some uh, Semperfly Nano Silk and Olive um, for the uh, dubbing for the body I'm going to be using this hair hard dubbing from uh, Hens it's a uh, um, three different per, uh, um, materials in it. I know it's rabbit, uh, I can't remember, hamster and something else I think. I, I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll put it down in the description if I can find it. So um, for the uh, for the rib we'll be using some Semperfly hollow tinsel in the copper. Uh, the 130, uh, one, uh, 2.08 mil. 0.8 mil. Geez. Um, for the underwing a little bit of hen's angel hair in the chartreuse. And then for the overwing and the front head, I'm going to be using some Hens CDC in olive. Alrighty, let's get her going. So first things first, I'm going to wax my thread a little bit. It's important in this pattern to wax your thread um, all the way through, be keeping it consistently thread um, waxed. Um, it's uh, especially with the CDC, it is slippery. You want to be able to keep that on. Angel hair, slippery. Right, so just want to make sure that the material stays on. So just make sure you continue to wax your thread throughout. Go back to about where the barb would be. And then I'm open turns, I'm gonna come back, leaving a bit of room. I'm gonna take some of my uh, copper. I could have swore I had some out here, but I don't. Nope, that's not the right one, it's this one. That one's too thick. I use the, uh, the heavier, the medium version um, for uh, larger patterns. So let's uh, just grab the wrong one. So just offer that up to the side here. Open turns, bringing it back to where I stopped. Put this in my material clip to keep it out of the way. And I come forward a little bit. my thread come back again to my tie-in point there now you can do a dubbing loop if that's what you want to do if you want it buggier um, I, I like doing it this way it gets it plenty buggy enough um, the uh, the uh, one I'm going to use today is kind of this coppery ready brown it's the number 14 right here uh, between my fingers there that one right there the number 14 okay that's the one I'm going to use I'm just going to take a little bit out of the time here so just a little bit not a ton and I'm just gonna do a a loose-ish dub don't go too tight here okay don't want too loose either but um, so I'm just gonna bring that forward until it grabs and once it grabs, I'll just give that a twist, a twist, just to make sure it stays on. Like I said, I do want it a looser, but not crazy loose either. I'm just going to put just a tiny bit more right in the front there. Just want to a tiny bit more. There we go. That'll do. That's in, counter wrap. And I like doing 
two to three turns backwards and then back over top leaving a little bit of a, a copper hot spot and then I'll start opening up and coming forward tie that off actually going to turn on this other light here because I think that'll help hey look that'll help okay now what I like doing is I like taking my little dabbing brush is just a popsicle stick with some velcro and just roughing it a bit just getting it nice and buggy all right there you go nice and buggy all right <clears throat> so now i'll take a bit of the green chartreuse angel hair not a lot i'm just going to take a little pinch of it and i'm actually going to stack it on top of each other just to align those fibers a bit and then I'm going to fold that over. So now I've folded it over. So, okay. And I'm going to just cut the folded end here straight. Wax, wax, wax. Lay this in there. Not worried about that little straggler at the moment. Okay, just cut that little, that little straggler went away. So now I want that about to the bend. No more than that. Okay. I'm gonna just zoom in just a bit for you guys there. There. Okay. Again, just a little bit of wax and now I'm going to open up my pack of CDC I actually just picked these up today from Fly Life Canada the hen CDC one of the better quality CDC's I've found on the market um, so what a good quality CDC when you're when you're tying with it right so so now I'm just going to take a couple of feathers stack them on top of each other okay and then I'm going to bring all the tips together I lick my fingers just a little bit and I'm just going to have that so it's just longer than the uh, underwing okay and then I'm going to pinch that and bring it one two three four six I can always come back and undo it if it's not where I want it That would be fine. I'm not the biggest fan of the feather on my side. You see, it's got a bit of a curve out, but that'll be fine. Okay, then I'm just going to do two in front, another one on top, and cut that off. Okay, now I could stop there if I wanted to, just that's it. But what I like doing is I like finishing this off. So I'll get another one or two feathers you can see I've already used half of one here and I'm going to stroke these fibers back and then I'm going to stack two of them on top of each other and then I'm going to put that into my material clip just to make sure they're all lined up nicely so now they're in my material clip and I'm going to cut the, the core out of them just want the tips right so I'm just going to cut that core out I'm just taking any of the little stragglers just come back to about there make my dubbing loop I like just pushing that hook up just a bit like that just so the the thread doesn't fall off now I'm going to just take my wax and put it in between on top again this stuff slippery right so especially when you got slippery materials use lots of wax okay now I'm going to put my material clip in there Oh. OK, 
Okay, so now I'll just take that. Now you could do a split thread technique here as well if you wanted instead of a dubbing loop. And now I'm just going to wrap this touch and wraps forward, stroking it back every time you go around. One last time, just to make sure I get that last little bit. This is going to give you that real scraggly head. It's going to give you really a buggy looking head when it's done. Not such a clean finish as just with the wing. And I like that for these. Okay, now I'll take my whip finisher and I'll do one set of whip finish, hold everything back. Do one, two, three. And then I'm going to take a little bit of Sally's, put it right on the thread. Try not to get this on the CDC itself, it'll kind of defeat the purpose of it, right? So, like I just did, <laughs> of course, after I say it, I'll just pick that piece out. Gonna pick that little piece out there. There we go. Now I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna brush out that stuff that I just dubbed in there. Just brush that out. Make sure that sits back. And you see how nice and buggy and move how much movement that's got. And then when you see this from underneath, it's got quite the buggy little profile, right? And it's got that little copper in there just to uh, as a highlight and same with those that chartreuse underwing right and that's it that's the final fly now I could take my lighter and just hold everything back and just give that that eye a cleanup which I did simple enough right and then there you go and there she is little CDC caddis it's a great little pattern um, like I said I've been playing with different iterations or whatever different versions of it <laughs> for a few years and uh, this is one where I pretty well settled on um, it's been working really well for me uh, fish like it really buggy looking and it floats forever and ever and ever so um, if you want it to float even longer put on instead of using the uh, the hard dubbing put on some hens uh, some uh, sorry some Zemperfly uh, Kapok the Kapok dubbing for the body the Kapok doesn't isn't as buggy um, that's why I like this one for, for this. It doesn't have as many spikies on it, um, but it, uh, it'll definitely float a heck of a lot longer because of that cap on. So it depends what you want. I want this one floating and in that surface film. That's where I want it. I just want that just in that surface film. And I, I, I fish this one fairly static. I, don't, I don't, uh, don't give it a lot of movement. I might give it a, a twitch here and a twitch there. Um, but in general, I just leave this one alone. Um, just uh, let it let it do its thing. Let the fish come to it. Alrighty. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've subscribed, thank you. If you have not, consider doing so. And pass the pass uh, the word out uh, to all your buddies and stuff about this. Still going to continue doing two tying videos a week, Wednesdays and Sundays. And then uh, once the fall hits, I'll start doing three again. So, uh, any requests? Let me know. Make comments. Talk to you later. Tie lines, everyone.